Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today I have something kind of exciting. We're gonna be unboxing my new refrigerator for my van. Now, as many of you know, along the way, I have carried a couple of different fridges in my van, and currently I had a smaller fridge that fits right under my bed that I built out my entire van to work with. The only problem is, that fridge started to kick the bucket and in doing so I needed to replace it with something different. Now I thought at first I could get along without having to do that but I decided that for the safety of my travels going forward and to be able to keep my cool food it was definitely worth it just to uh do something a little different. So our friends over at Set Power sent me this because they had seen me mention in several videos I was struggling a little bit. And so today we're gonna unbox this and uh, see if it's going to work out for my van. I'm really excited about this one, guys, because this is one of their newer models and um, it's a smaller one, so it should fit into my build, which of course, we'll have to wait until I get the van back to find out for sure, but um, Let's find out what this thing looks like, shall we? Now this is the FC15 by Set Power. It is considered to be a mobile freezer slash fridge. You can have it all the way down to negative four degrees Fahrenheit. So we could use this for a hard freeze or we could use it at a slightly higher temperature for the refrigerator. And I'm very excited because this looks to be the right size for the space that I have. Now, another thing about this one is it's lightweight. It's only about 22 pounds. And so that's very important for me because I pull my fridge out in order to use it in my current orientation. So this should be a good size, but also a good weight, which is one of my big things whenever I'm looking for a fridge option. Now, here are my criteria right here for all the things that I need in my fridge. I need it to to be efficient. I need it to be able to store the things that I want it to store. I need it to be able to be a 12 volt compatible because I do run it off of power stations. I need it to be able to be compact and also lightweight so I can maneuver it or take it out of my van completely without having to use some kind of like rollout or pull out. So all of those things are my priorities personally. And so, um, Let's see what's inside and find out if it does in fact check all those boxes. Now this came to me and was wrapped in plastic. So I'm gonna start off by just cutting through the plastic and peeling it away. Um, everything came in pretty quickly. Again, Set Power did send this to me from the time that we corresponded until the time, oops, that it arrived. It was only a few days. So their shipping has always been really great. Now, you guys might remember my very first van fridge was a set power and I really liked it. The only reason I stopped using it was because it was a little bit large for my space. So I'm excited to get back to set power because my parents have a set power. I really liked my set power and now we're back in the family again. Okay, plastic's all off. Now on to the box. The box itself doesn't have anything saying that we can't cut into it with scissors, so here we go. It does have clear markings mentioning which side is the top and which side is the bottom. And um, if I can cut, we'll eventually get in here. Huh, BRB guys. Okay, now that we're inside, um, this is actually a 15 liter refrigerator and so it's going to hold about 15 liters or 15 point something quarts. And so that's around the same size as the fridge that I had previous. Now I wanted to get it, ooh, it's green guys, this is fun. You know that I like colors and you can clearly see by looking at other parts of my van how many bright fun colors I have. This is fun. Do you see this really pretty color? Okay, so this is gonna be exciting. Um, give me a second, I'm gonna figure out, oh wait, I can just lift it out of the box. Here we go, oh, and um, let's do this. Whoop. <laughs> this is a great size. In fact, this is going to be perfect for my van because it's not huge. That was my biggest thing, is finding something to fit into my space is so important because I've already built my van to suit a smaller fridge like this. 
So now, ooh, I'm seeing it. It's looking nice. This is very cool. It has the built-in molded plastic handles, so it's very easy to lift. I love that because, let's face it, we've all seen the fridges that you have to put the extra handles on and then they stick out a good chunk and then that makes them too big for the space. So you try to exist without them and it's just harder. So everything being attached is very nice. It also has these little securing hooks. I don't know if you guys can see this, but let me get a little bit closer so you can see what I'm talking about. Do you guys see these? These are really interesting. You could run like a little strap through these to actually like secure the fridge. That's really cool and very different than the other set power that I had. So I really like that. Also, we have the handle here, which just pops out and up. And then inside is our space. Ooh. This is nice and insulated. Now it is a little bit more shallow, I think, than the fridge that I had in there, but it's still big enough where I can store things. So let me get a few containers and we can see just what all we can put in here. Okay guys, these are the things that I use for my food usually whenever, oops, I'm having a hard day today, guys. But these are the things that I use. And the way that they work is they just pop open and then you pop them down and then you put the lid on it. So typically if I have leftovers or if I have fruits that I don't wanna be in the regular container, this is a good way to store them. And well, that fits easily in there. Let's do a couple of more and kind of see what this space looks like because this is realistically how I use my refrigerator. And I think that even though we could talk about every single spec on here, sometimes just visually seeing the space with your stuff in it makes it a little bit easier. So let me keep going. I have a couple more of these to go and, and then we'll look inside. Woohoo, I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. This is wonderful. I have been struggle bussing the last month that I was in Arizona because of my refrigerator. And so, this is going to work out great. Okay, inside we go. And as you can see, I have four containers in here and plenty of room to go. Um, this is a medium size one. There's a larger one. And these are two smaller ones that are actually stacked together. As you can see, I could maneuver these both lengthwise as well as widthwise and still have plenty of room. And this has a little bit of a texture to the bottom of it. So it keeps things from like slipping around, which is really cool. But let's put some other practical items that you guys would have at home so you could envision the space. And that way you could see kind of how much room there is. Okay, I went and grabbed some items that I commonly have that I take with me places. Now, Country Croc, this is just a nice tub. It doesn't get squished, so I like these. Definitely fits in there. Definitely no problem. The creamer, now this is something that I don't know if it'll fit because it doesn't look tall enough, but I usually take my creamer and I'll transport it into a different container in my other fridge. So let's see. Yeah, it's not quite gonna close with that one. So as you can see, it comes down to about where the ridge is. So this is about the height of the fridge itself to this ridge. It's not quite as deep as the other one. But that's okay because again, I have containers for this and I'll show you what they look like in just a minute. Same thing I think is gonna happen with these. Normally I flat lay these anyway because I can store more of them if I flat lay them. So yeah, sure enough, this would be a flat lay item still. So if I were to flat lay it, Oh yeah, that definitely would fit. And then I'd still have enough room to put food in there. So something like this could easily still fit beside it. So the width itself would be like these two things beside each other with a little bit of wiggle room. So that kind of gives you a visual as to how wide this is in a real perspective. So I think that that's pretty cool. Also, let's see, I have some mushrooms. Mushrooms in just a standard container easily fit down in here and there's still plenty of room around. Let me show you. You can see here that I could have the mushrooms next to the country crocs, still have all of my storage things in here. And I believe that this would also flat lay. Yes. 
So that's a good amount of space for me. And that's about as much as I usually would use in my regular fridge that I have currently. So this is gonna be perfect. Now I mentioned that I like to take my creamer and actually put it into a smaller bottle. So I found that they have these little containers at Walmart that are just little thermoses in the school supply section. These are perfect for storing creamer because not only does it completely close, but it's also not a container that's going to be like popping with the altitude or anything like that, which is really nice. Because again, I travel in a lot of crazy places. So I think what I could do is just fill up my creamer in like a couple of these and it'll easily store in here. So let's put it inside and see if this works. Now the other nice thing about this is because you can completely twist this cap on, it can now flat lay. So I could have not only this, but this on top of it, and then I could have space saving. So let's put this thing back in real quick, and then right on top of it, we're gonna set this. Oh yeah, that definitely works. Let me show you what the fridge is shaping up to be now. I would have my creamer, I could have drinks, I could have my leftovers and some of my little items. This is a good size for me. This really is going to work well. Now, the next question you guys probably have is how does this work? And that's really easy. It's just like the other fridges that I've used. There's an area that we plug it in and then we can plug it into a power station. Now, in order to do this, I'm gonna grab a power station and show you how it plugs in but we can also see if there's any weirdness or anything like that. So I'm going to turn it in this direction and uh, that way you guys can see the plug when we plug it in. Okay guys, there's a couple things that came with this. There are two separate adapters. There's one that I can plug into the 12 volt system and then there's also an AC adapter. Let's get out the AC adapter and look at it first. So you could use this if you have a solar system that already has plugins available around your vehicle. You could also use this if you're using it in a sticks and bricks, like my base camp. This is a good way for you to also take it inside if you're wanting to use it whenever you're traveling, if you decide to stay at a hotel overnight, or if you happen to have a plug-in at your campsite. This is a really cool way to be able to use this without necessarily draining your batteries. So inside we have a little adapter brick right here. This is kind of interesting. It actually still has a 12 volt plug. This is a very different setup than I am used to seeing. So this is kind of cool. You're still gonna end up using your 12 volt, it looks like, but it's gonna plug into here and then you can plug it into the wall. So here we have the cord, which we'll go ahead and untwist so we can see how long it is. That's a big deal whenever you're traveling. Sometimes cords aren't very long. This one, pretty decent. So whenever we plug this in, it goes straight into this little adapter and then we have an extra foot of cord here. So all together you're looking at almost as tall as me in cord. So then again, you would use this guy, which comes along with it. Oh, so many bags guys, so many bags. Now this is going to be the actual 12 volt. The 12 volt itself, again, can run off of a power station like this guy, or can be used with this adapter. So let's start off with the adapter just to see how it works. It would just plug into this area right here. And, eh, eh, is there a push in? There might be a push in. There it goes. Oh, that's nice and snug. That's good because a lot of these 12 volt adapters that I've seen along the way for other devices, kind of a loosey goosey and then that causes you to have glitches in your power but this one really popped in there hard now after that you could then take this end which has the connector for the actual refrigerator and run it down to the front and right here we have a plug cover set power thank you for putting a plug cover on these because when you put these into your vehicle sometimes you do have to disconnect them and then you have this open plug and stuff gets in there and then the fridge is never the same again i speak from experience on this one but this has a little groove in it so you just line up the groove with the groove pushes in nice and firm and then we're ready to go 
plugging it in. Now this is not ideal, but you can see I have the cord over here, just to kind of show you, it goes all the way over the other side. I've plugged it in and now it's time to turn it on and immediately it just turns straight on and then we can adjust by going up or down. It starts out on zero because it is designed to be a freezer unit. So typically I run my fridge, depending on where I'm going, at about 30 to 35 on average. Now it's currently, I can hear the compressor just a little bit Do you hear that? It's a very faint hum. It usually will not use the compressor the whole time, but typically whenever it's trying to drop the temperature, it will. We started out at 70 degrees and it's already made it to 68 degrees. Now I am going to leave this plugged in for just a little while to the wall so we can see how long it takes to drop it down. And we'll say that we're going to go for 50 degrees. So I'm going to start a timer to see how long it takes it to go from 66 to 50. And then we'll switch over to the battery to see how many watts it pulls and also how many watts that it takes to get it to drop the rest of the way. And if the compressor kicks on and off the whole time or if it's something that, you know, is a little bit different than that. Just for reference, it's 117 right now. Now while that's working its magic, let's talk a little bit about why I have a fridge in my van and why I think that everyone should at some point. Now I do realize you don't have to have a fridge because I have lots of friends who don't. In fact, Lady Bug Out has never had a fridge in her van and she does great. But she also knows how to responsibly take care of fruits and veggies. And a lot of people, whenever they're traveling through different climates and things like that, that's a little bit harder of a struggle. So unless you're familiar or comfortable with doing that, a fridge is a great option. Not to mention, you can keep things that you might not necessarily be able to have otherwise. For example, I tent camped for three years three years guys and in that time I never had a fridge and so I couldn't have access to those fruits and veggies that did require refrigeration. I could never have cold creamer. I never had super cold water and sometimes it's nice just to have those comforts. So whenever you're looking at different things, sometimes just taking account of, oh, do I need this? Do I want this? It's important whenever you're trying to like plan your journey and by no means do you have to start off with a fridge, but if you you are knowing which fridge would be best for you based on the size of your van, the build that you're going to do. I learned that the hard way. And then also your independent needs will help you to dictate what kind of fridge that you're looking for. Now Set Power has a variety of different kinds of fridges on their website and I just kind of wanted to show you a few of those. My parents have the fridge freezer. They are loving it already and they have it installed in their van and I hope to update you guys on that very soon because they can have both frozen food and just cold food and go wherever they want to go. And it's kind of awesome and I wish I had more room because wow that thing is epic but they also have some smaller sizes I had a larger smaller size if that makes sense it was a bit taller and I really liked that one because of the depth of it you could put full-size sodas or a bottle of wine or you could put tall creamers in there and they would stand upright as opposed to having to do the lay down and so that was really cool but for a smaller more compact space something like this is perfect because it's going to allow me to take the things that I need and want but also have enough of a room underneath my space to not crowd my space. So all of those things are super important when you're looking into a fridge and I do implore you to check out more of the Set Power website because they have some great options. So again, a company that I trust, that I've been using, that I have used many times, that I have used several iterations of in the various builds that I have been a part of or seen. With that said, let's check on the temperature. 61 degrees and uh, it's 121. So only a couple minutes have passed since it's already dropped that much. This is good. Now let's address the other elephant in the room. Why am I standing in my base camp kitchen? You guys are still seeing my videos from Arizona. And the reason why is because I filmed a lot of content so that you guys could have adventures while my van is currently in the shop. My van is in the shop because I had an accident. For anyone who missed out on that, I was rear-ended whenever I was in Phoenix and I came back to Texas so that I could get it fixed with a shop that I know and trust. And so while I'm here, 
here. I'm sharing some of the things that I'll be putting back into the van, but I wanted to share this because a lot of you had been asking after my video where I had to move everything around what I was thinking about my fridge because I've had so many issues. So I wanted to go ahead and hop out and say, I'm okay guys, I promise, I made it back. And you'll still continue seeing all sorts of great adventures, including whenever we went to Bisbee to Weird Wild West and then some other things. But I did want to go ahead and hop on and share this with you so that you guys wouldn't stress out because I know many of you have been so concerned. And I actually had one of you who reached out and said you had an extra fridge and that you wanted to send it to me, but you couldn't ship it to my PO box. Don't worry about it. I'm okay. I promise I'm okay. I have one, but thank you so much. And I hope that if you do find someone else who is looking for one or needs one, one, that you will be able to rehome that fridge because um, I think that it's great that you were so generous with that so thank you um, with that said I am so excited because you might have also noticed this little power station right here that we're gonna be showing a little bit of today I'm gonna be going into a little bit more detail about it while I'm here at base camp as well as following up on my van powers because guys I got some thoughts so I didn't want to overwhelm you guys with tons of just like here's this here's this here's this so I'm going to kind of string them in between some of the other videos so that it doesn't overwhelm you with like, why are you showing me all of these reviews all at once? They are things that I've been testing out over time or that I will be testing out. But at the same time, I don't want to overwhelm you guys. So I am good. I am okay. Thank goodness I had some struggles along the way and you'll see those and wow. But just know, I'm good. I am good. <laughs> okay, temp is still dropping. Um, I just noticed something that's kind of interesting as I'm like playing with it. There's a texture to this and um, I think that this is great because this would make things not slip if I did put them on top. Again, this goes under my bed so that's not going to be a huge thing for me, but I do like that. And then also I noticed that once you open it, it does not automatically close unless you pull out the handle. So it has a little safety lock there. And so you have to push that down. But also you'll notice that these little indentions here allow you to flip the direction that the lid goes on, which is very nice. So I could set this up where whenever I pull it out, if I needed to be able to open it from this side, I could. I do like this side being the accessible side, however, because I think that when I normally would pull this out, it would be in my aisle. And so if I was sitting on my bed, I could open it from this direction more easily. I want to make sure that the vents are going to be pointing out whenever they're in the van so that it can breathe very well. So I don't want this side to be under the bed. And also that'll give me a glimpse so I can keep an eye on the temperature whenever it's in the van itself and make sure the power is connected. Because you know, that's how I was able to figure out the other fridge was having some struggles. Now, initially when that other fridge was having some struggles, I started noticing that the power would pop on and off and I thought it might be the cord. I replaced the cord and that wasn't it. I started looking and noticing that I was having an issue with the battery itself that I was connecting to. And so I removed that from the equation and plugged it into another one and realized that the fridge was still kind of having some wonky donkey issues. I am going to keep that fridge as a last resort backup option. However, I'm probably not going to ever be putting it back into the van. It'll be more so something for base camp for preparedness. And um, eventually it may just completely go away. Um, I do want to troubleshoot it though, because I am a person who is inquisitive. And so I'm just curious as to what exactly went awry. Now, realistically, it lasted about two years. So so that was pretty good for a small like refrigerator freezer. However, I feel as though this guy right here, based on my experience with set power, will outlive that one definitely. So again, we're still going on the, the downward spiral of getting it all cooled off and you know, it's taken a couple minutes, but it's never been plugged in before. So all in all, I think this is right on track for where it should be. And based on the conditions, I do not have the air conditioner on in the house. It's, it's kind of muggy in Texas today, so it's a little warmer in here. It started out at 70 degrees, and so we're dropping it down. And so this is a pretty typical time frame for that initial plug-in. Now, one thing I do encourage you guys to do if you do have a base camp is test out all of your gear before before you take it out in the field to one, make sure it works correctly. Two, if you need to return anything, it's way easier. And um, 
Three, if you cool it off and then put it in the vehicle, it uses less of your batteries when you're in the vehicle right from the jump. So that is a very nice, wonderful way to start your journeys already a step in the right direction. Now I know not everyone has access to do that and I completely understand, but if you do, it really helps out a lot. <laughs> okay, you can see it jumped right down to 49%. It was at 51 and then just jumped straight to 49. So it's getting cool really fast. And it is 136. So that didn't take even 20 whole minutes to get it down to 49 degrees. But let's plug it into the power station over here now and see how many watts it's pulling. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in first. And again, this is a very snug plug, unlike a lot of the ones that we've been using. And then we turn it on and it should pop up and start to regulate. Okay, it's starting to get ready to draw. We should hear the compressor kick on. And again, I'm just checking the temperature. We're going for 35 degrees and it shows that it's starting to pull. And it says here that it's pulling 36 watts, 40 watts. And um, it's gonna continue to kind of go up and down for just a few moments to kind of make itself regulate. And after it does, then it should drop considerably down once it reaches its maximum temperature. Okay, we've been on a steady about 45 to 47 or 48 for a few minutes now. It's 145 and we are currently at 36% over here. So we haven't even dropped a single percentage point on the power station because it's not taking that long. And guess what guys, it just hit 35%. It is now 145. So 35 degrees, let's open it up. Ooh, this is metal and it is super, super cold now. And you can see it's kind of getting that cloudy fog on it that happens whenever you take something out of the refrigerator because it was so cold. Um, let's see about this guy right here. Yeah, super cold. This was right on the bottom. And again, you can see, and in fact, we can draw on it because it's, it's so cold, you, you can see that. So yeah, this is perfect. This is gonna be absolutely awesome whenever I get to put it back in the van. And I really like the size. Again, the size is very manageable and easy to use. Now there are a couple of other features that I wanna share with you guys before we wrap up this video that I think are really handy, especially for people who are just starting out in van life. So in order to do that, um, you guys, you guys have to come over here. Okay, come over here, come over here. Do you see this? Do you see this? This right here, this is handy. I'm gonna empty a few things out and uh, let you see why. You can see a little bit better now after taking a few things out. This is actually a recommended setting temperature to help you figure out how cold things need to be based on what kind of food that they are. And it says here, the above information is for reference only. So I definitely encourage you guys to keep this in the refrigerator and don't try to peel it off. It has everything from like water drinks, juice, red wine, fruit, vegetables, prepared fruit, meat, seafood, or quick frozen food. And then it also has over here some troubleshooting items. And I will say I wish every refrigerator freezer had this because it gives you all of the different codes that you can get on your refrigerator freezer so you'll know what to do to reset the fridge or what to do to troubleshoot it before you immediately freak out. Now why is that important? Well, I've had a couple of moments where I've been around other people and their refrigerator has acted up. And in doing so, it displays right here on the front screen a little code. And unless you have your book and you can go through it, which a lot of people unfortunately throw away the book or don't travel with it, then you have no idea what's going on. So then you're left to the devices of the internet to figure it out. Unfortunately, the internet is not always the best thing though, because sometimes we don't have access to good service and so it can make troubleshooting your fridge a much more tedious task. By the fact that they have this inside, if I were to get a code like a E1, that just means I have low battery voltage, which means that it's something that I can easily fix. There's also one in here that says E2, which means that there is a DC fan error. So that means that it's not able to breathe and move or something has gotten in there. And so I would know kind of where I needed to work to troubleshoot it before I got 
really freaked out thinking everything is about to spoil. I would have some guidance at least along the way. And that also helps you with knowing if you need to reach out to the company or if you need to get a new fridge or if you need to just simply take a screwdriver and unscrew something to fix it. So I really like that that is there and it's super, super handy. And again, I think all fridges should have that. And um, so I'm really pleased with this set power in so many different ways. And I think you guys can see how this is gonna be a good option in not only my van, but it could be a good option in your potential adventure rig. If you're wanting something small, I see this to be a good viable solution for that. It looks like it's going to be nice and rugged and hardy. The materials that they've used are a good quality. And so whether you're putting this under your bed, on a shelf, or in your front seat, or back seat if you're overlanding and want to throw it in the back of your vehicle and make sure it's covered of course now the elements I think this is a good one so uh, I'm really happy that I could share this again thanks guys for all of your concerns in regards to my travels I hope that this review is helpful to you you'll be seeing a lot more of this on my channel very soon Remember guys, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. And having things that make life easier on the road is definitely that. So today I want to say thank you to Set Power for reaching out and sending this my way and getting me back in the Set Power family. The FC15 is going to go into my van as soon as I get it back from the shop and I can't wait. I'm super excited. That's one less thing that I have to uh, figure out along the way because I had to empty the entire van and oh my gosh, what a task. <laughs> Until next time guys, bye.